that. Da -da 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 -da. I am live. So it tells me. Oh, yeah, the little counter's going. I guess I am. Hello. I'm Amanda Call, and I am not doing a comic today. Today I'm going to make an illustration on black paper with, with colored pencils. I haven't actually done this before, so this could be interesting. Um, I did a little test this afternoon where I, like, tested what my different colored pencils looked like. So, so I at least sort of know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna start trying to figure out how to draw the thing I want to draw. <laughs> oh, I need to adjust. I'm not. I'm not close enough, and now I'm bumping into my camera. Okay. Oh, I need to figure out how to draw the thing I want to draw on here. Let's see if I can do this. Like most of the time, y'all watch me be like, "Is that showing up at all?" Very faintly. All right, we'll try to get past this stage as quickly as we can. Most of the time, y'all get to watch me being, like, super chill and confident because I know what I'm doing. And every once in a while, I go and do something where I clearly have no idea what I'm doing. Which has a, a different sort of value to it than the times when I am clearly know what I'm doing. I'm starting with this kind of dark color because when you're working on black, you got to kind of do everything opposite. So rather than starting with a very light pencil line on a white piece of paper, I'm starting with a very dark red on black paper because for the same reason, because it's less visible. So that as I frog around and try to figure out what my shapes are supposed to look like, I'm not making a big dark permanent mark that I can't do anything with later. Especially because I can't erase this. <laughs> I'm just going straight with colored pencil onto this paper. I can't erase it if I mess up. I just gotta live with it. So this is challenging. So the reason I'm doing this is uh, it's May. And if you've been if you've been with me for watching me here for more than a year, then you would know that every May I participate in the Great Strides fundraiser to raise money for cystic fibrosis research. My niece has CF, and so every year as a family we all join in the fundraising effort. And the last couple of years, the way I've done that is to create an original piece of artwork and raffle it off. I create an original illustration and everybody who donates to the fundraising page, every $5 that you donate gets you a chance in the raffle. Is the idea. Okay, I think that I got that pedal. Now we need to get this pedal over here and this one up here these vague shapes at least it's sort of showing up well on camera but anyway if you're interested um in winning this piece that will hopefully look good <laughs> uh, then you can check out the fundraising page at it's in the um, video description right now I will chat too, just so that it's accessible for you guys. I mean, like two shakes here. There you go. If you would like to help contribute, win a chance. Officially, the fundraiser ends on Friday because I'm. A disaster person and didn't get this together any earlier. But I'm going to be running the raffle a little bit longer. I haven't decided exactly how longer. Probably at least another week. Get close to my fundraising goal before I call it. Okay. Just about done with the outline here. I think that'll do it. You can kind of see that it looks like a, a rose is coming to life there. 
it's pretty difficult to see at this point. That is okay. So let's see, how do I want to do this? Let's start with a little bit of, where's my yellow ochre? There you are. Let's start with a little bit of yellow ochre around some of these, some of these points here. Build this up a little bit. This one right here. So this is a cooler yellow ochre. It's nice, a nice warm bright color. The cream on the black is a really cool color. You can see it's got a totally different tone to it. Do that for this petal. It has more of a cool tone to it. Um, if, as it turns out, this illustration comes out completely horrible, I'll raffle off a different one. <laughs> I won't, I won't leave the fundraiser tied to this if it ends up not being very good. That would be silly. You can also tell that I'm using a technique that I'm not as comfortable with because you can see me hesitating and thinking more instead of just plowing ahead like I do with ink because I know what I'm doing. Here I, I really, really, really do not know what I am doing. That's okay. I kind of picked up this paper on a whim when I was in Michael's recently because we finally got a Michael's near me. We had an AC Moore for a long time and then it closed. And then we only had one major craft retailer that I didn't like shopping with. So I just really didn't go to the craft store very much for a while there. Most of my stuff I bought online. But now we have a Michaels. So when I was in there, I saw this black paper and I was like, oh, that would be fun to play with. And so now I'm having fun playing with it. Whoops, I'm out of frame. There we go. Back in frame, please. One of my favorite artists on that I follow on Instagram, Brian Surway, does like a lot of his work on black paper. And I always think it looks super cool. Part of why it looks super cool is just his his style is super cool. But like even when he does when he does stuff on white paper or toned paper or whatever, it looks cool too. But the stuff he does on black paper is really neat. So you should check him out if you can, if you're interested. 
Let's see. Uh, I don't know what I got here. Trying to make sense of the little scribbles I made the first time around here. <laughs> okay, that's that. That thin little edge there. And then there's this little triangle. Roses are really complex shapes too. Like they're just, they're not easy to draw. A lot going on. Okay, we've got those nice little highlighted edges. It looks like a pastry. <laughs> Don't think that's exactly what we're going for, but you know. Okay, let's start doing some of this. That center is gonna stay just black. Okay. I'm trying to make sure I know what I'm doing here. The secret is I do not actually. See if this will start looking like something. As much as I like to usually like work a piece all over and then slowly make it more refined all over, I feel like the rose is complex and confusing enough that I might need to just focus on one section at a time. I did give myself a limited palette, so that should help. So we're gonna we're gonna try to switch gears over to that because I'm getting confused. What color is this? I need to look at my little, that's crimson. That's what I want. Okay, starting in build up a little color here. Um, this particular part of this, what is this, peach beige? Yeah, that's what I want. This particular part of the rose is pretty dark. Where is, nope, that's not what I want. Scarlet, where are you? Scarlet Lake, that's what I want. Oh, it's dull, I need to sharpen it.
All right. What is this? Poppy? Yeah, sure. We'll go with that. Put a little orange pop there. It gets a lot easier once you get out of this little pocket of all the very tiny petals close together. It's very confusing in here. But yes, anyone who is watching, if you have uh, questions, by all means, I know I'm kind of struggling a little, <laughs> so I may seem like I can't answer questions. I still can. I might just answer them slowly. to sharpen my crimson now. I do have a reference image up on my other screen, so I sort of know what I'm doing. And so far as I ever know what I'm doing. That came out nice. That color combo worked pretty well. Okay, so now we're moving on to, let's see, this petal over here? Yeah, that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to do that petal next. So, this gets a little easier. It's less confusing than all these very tiny overlapping shapes in the middle. So let's see, we've got a little dark shadowed pocket in here. Again, the big challenge with this is that you have to work backwards. You have to leave the shadows and build up everything that isn't shadows around it, which is kind of backwards to how you normally draw and work with color, which is what makes it really tricky to do. It's like kind of a brain bender to leave the black and to build the color up out of it.
Letting the red blend with that yellow ochre I put down earlier. And we'll still pick a little bit of a highlight out. Okay, that's that's doing a little bit more of like what I actually wanted to. <laughs> We're getting there. We're starting to figure it out. No, which one do I want? I want crimson. There we go. So let's see, this has a little highlight here where that petal kind of bends over. Okay. And over here. Let's see. Where is this? Let's do this inside. This one that's on the inside first before we do that one. So we've got like a dark section here. Okay. I'm realizing as I'm working on this too that my reference image is like slightly out of focus. <laughs> Keep on trying to like squint at certain parts of it and then I'm like, oh, it's not in focus. I don't really know what I'm looking at.
Okay. Oh, now I need to sharpen my Tuscan red. No, the tip broke. Okay, I guess that's better, better-ish, better-ish. Okay, I think I can do this one now. Yeah, okay, we can do this one now. Oh, and a big chunk just fell off. Sadness, okay. Stop having chunks fall off. Why are you doing that? Okay. Ah, so I just launch my pencil off out of frame. Just fling it. It's a great plan. All right, it's starting to actually look like a rose. We're, we're getting there. We're making some progress here. All right, which one's, I, you know, I think I'm going to go straight for the poppy on this particular one. It is extremely bright. This particular petal. We're going to go... Straight to super bright. Why is my... Oh, my... Lordy, I was leaning on my keyboard, and the chat seems to think that I'm trying to put, like, a million characters in the chat. That's obnoxious. That's very obnoxious. I promise I was not trying to actually put all those characters in the chat. There, YouTube. That was an accident. I'm just going to ignore that because that was an accident. Good grief. Back. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not doing that. All right. So 
So we will do that. We will do some crimson in here to deepen that up a little bit. I think that looked nice. I think that worked out kind of nice. The colors are not showing up quite accurately on camera. I feel like I probably should have balanced it a little bit differently because this is black paper, but it's showing up kind of gray for you guys. Also, the light is making it look very, very waxy because <laughs> it's bouncing off of the pencil. But anyway, all right, so another one here. We've got to leave a great big shadowed area. And this area is very bright. I have no idea where we are on time. Oh, we're half an hour in. Okay. Like, I've been so engrossed in trying to do this. I have not in the least bit been keeping an eye on the time. Not even a little. this a little bit of a little bit of that all right what do we want to do next I think I'll do this petal next We've got, again, some, like, deep shadows going on over here. So we're going to leave those black, kind of carved out where they're going to be. And then I'm going to go in with my crimson red. which needed to be sharpened. A little bit of cream around the edges. There we go. Now let's do this great big petal back up here. So let's see. I've got a couple spots where there's going to be kind of not like not black like the areas that we've left, but kind of darker. I'm going to fill those in with 
my Tuscan red first. On this upper edge, we're going to do the poppy red. build some of that red up a little bit more in spots where it wants to be a little bit more vibrant A little bit of a highlight. Oh, it's really starting to actually look like something. <laughs> we'll see how close I get to done by the time the hour is up. We're getting we're getting there, about 40 minutes in. I will be finishing this up immediately after the stream if I don't finish it up on the stream, which is, of course, the goal. But we'll see. It doesn't always work that way.
All right, so if we give this one its nice, cool highlight. This one has its nice warm edge. Oh, very pretty. I've only got a couple of petals left to try to sort out here. That needs to be sharpened again. Ooh, that one's got a nice little form to it, I think. All getting close. I will remind anybody who's coming in late that I am creating this illustration in order to raffle it off for charity. Charity is the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. We do the Great Strides fundraiser every May. for my niece who has CF. If you're not familiar, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease that affects the exocrine system, makes it really, makes a bunch of, gives a bunch of really nasty effects, one of which is uh, making it very difficult for those with CF to breathe because their lungs are all full of like gross mucus and stuff. But every year we do a fundraiser, try to raise money 
for the CF Foundation to help fund research into treatments for those living with CF and help extend their lives and give them a better quality of life. And the last couple of years, I've created a piece of artwork to raffle off to somebody who donates to my campaign. So every time you donate, every $5 that you donate gets you a chance to win this piece of artwork. So if you donate $5, you get one chance. If you donate $25, you get five chances, et cetera, et cetera. The like actual texture on this petal is like the the like veininess of the petal is actually very pronounced. To my reference, I'm gonna give that a little bit more. I'm gonna give that a little bit more pronunciation in my drawing too. Should I have been doing that the whole time? Yeah, probably. So I put the link to my fundraising page in the description. It's also in the chat here. If you want to check that out, I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, getting toward the end here. Oh, only one more petal, and we've only got 10 minutes left. One more big petal. Oh, it's got a great big shadow on it. Of course it does, because it's on the bottom. This whole area is like not fully shadowed, but certainly not really out in the light either. Similarly over here. All right, so I will go over the YouTube stuff while I finish this. I'm Amanda Call. This is my channel. Normally I'm working on comic pages from my webcomic, Age of Night. Obviously that's not what I'm doing today. I'm doing my fundraiser illustration. I do a couple of these a year. So most of the time it's comic pages and other artwork like that. But not today. If you like watching me work live on stream, you should like this video and subscribe to the channel so that YouTube will show you when I go live, which is usually every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. If you would be so kind as to share this particular video 
so that I can get more eyes on my fundraiser. That would be great. We want to help raise money for a good cause here. You can also check out my webcomic that I'm not working on today at ageofnight.com. That's A-G-E-O-F-N-I-G-H-T dot com. Like a lighter spot over here. It's kind of, it's kind of neat. The way that works. There we go. You can also follow me on social media. I'm on Twitter at Age of Night and Instagram at Amanda Call Art. You will see this picture posted there soon because I'm just about done with it. Look at that took us just about an hour to do something I had no idea if I could even do. <laughs> Check out the link to my fundraiser. That would be super awesome. I appreciate it. Um, I think that's pretty much going to do it. So I started with a blank piece of black paper from my uh, Canson XL black drawing paper. Thanks so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope my floundering around was at least somewhat entertaining. <laughs> um, and I drew on it with uh, an assortment of Prismacolor colored pencils. Um, really, I just used these ones. I pretty much just used these ones. I did all of that with um, seven colors. I knew I was going to keep myself to a limited palette, and it turned out that a much more limited palette actually worked pretty well. So yeah, I hope everybody enjoyed, and thanks so much. I will see you next time. Bye.